Welcome back. So the topic for today is how to clean records. Now, I'll say this is like how I clean records. And really, I have three primary ways of doing it. And so I'm going to walk through each of them. Um, not like three different spray solutions, but, but really just three completely different ways that I clean records on a somewhat regular basis, right? Because you don't want to, you don't want to play records with dust on them, with smudges, with grease, like any of that stuff, right? Um, and in my opinion, you don't want to sell records in that condition either because you're going to disappoint the person on the other end of the, uh, of the purchase, right? Uh, they're going to get something and it's going to be, it's going to be super dirty. And even if it, even if the condition is theoretically right, they're going to, you're going to leave a bad taste in their mouth if the record shows up and it's dirty and it has like dust all over it and, um, and you know, it's a mess. Right, so um, that, that's that's the purpose for me sharing at least how I clean records. Now, this is a pretty contentious topic. There's a lot of people on YouTube that are talking about how they clean records and specific things that you shouldn't do. And guess what? Some of those things I do. Uh, don't worry, um, wood glue is not one of them. But um, what, here, we'll, we'll get into it. But really what I wanna cover, like I said, is three different ways. And what I wanna get away from is um, is this right here. Even though this is kind of like, you know, it comes together and it comes with solution usually. What I don't like about this is honestly, mostly the shape of this thing, like holding this like wood block is a little bit awkward over a record. There have been a few times where I've actually dropped this thing, uh, including on a record. And so, um, I don't know, it's just, it's a little awkward for me. This also holds an obscene amount of dust. Um, I actually did, you're not gonna be able to see this, but if I like ran my hand over this, dust would just kind of like come pouring out. And so, um, well, I haven't used this in a while, so don't worry that much, but this just seems to hold on to um, a ton of dust. And so I'm not as much of a fan. I also don't really like this. So I don't like this thing because it's so easy to get lost. And honestly, I think I see more people use this to try to clean their stylus than, than using it for, I think it's intended purpose, which is to actually clean the brush. Not a huge fan of that. A couple of other things that sometimes I do keep by a uh, record player are, are little brushes that look like this. So I forget the, the make of this one. This one is by a Record Doctor. I believe that this is goat hair and this is probably some sort of synthetic. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I think Record Doctor does make goat hair brushes. This is meant for like sort of the final sweep of a record. So after you've <laughs> after you've cleaned it theoretically with some type of solution, this is something, or, or if it's already a relatively clean record and all you're seeing is just like a little bit of dust or maybe a hair or something and you don't want to put your fingers on the record, right? So you're going to transport oils onto it. So th this is for like that sort of final sweep, um, I, I suppose. Uh, of, a, uh, of a record and so I think it's helpful to have one of these by honestly even just the additional touch and this is don't get me wrong this is super soft and it wouldn't damage a record I'm quite sure but um, one of my favorite uh, techniques honestly is just uh, canned air so you know just kind of like blowing this on a uh, on a record now the um, a couple of uh, warnings on uh, using canned air you don't want to have um, the the, uh, the can up like this because uh, the actual um, Oh, what is in this? I, I don't even uh, I don't even remember the actual um, you know the name of uh, of what canned air actually is. Does it say anywhere? But anyway, what what'll happen is you'll get that like cold liquid um, coming out <laughs> and uh, freezing your record, and, and you don't want that to happen. So I mean, you got to hold it um, upright, but then also it's kind of difficult to control where the dust goes, and so dust could theoretically leave and then come right back. But um, I do I do like having canned air. Um, nearby as well, just because it's easy and then you don't have to make any contact with the record at all. So another um, another tool that I've used is uh, Zero Dust. So what this is, and I'll take the, uh, the cap off, this is a little sort of gelatinous disc that um, you, you lower your tone arm down onto and it's kind of like it's not it, it's kind of like sticky and it's like I said gelatinous and it um it picks up any like dust balls or, or, or uh, dirt particles off the end of your stylus and so um, that can be a, uh, a pretty handy tool as well the only thing with this is that you'd be surprised at how quickly it gets dirty and um, you do have to wash it you have to remember to wash this thing on a regular basis uh, because otherwise you're just going to be constantly exposing your um, your stylus to additional dust so um, so those are kind of like some of the traditional items, I suppose, that I've used for a long time. Um, 
there is a new sort of all-in-one product that I kind of like, and, and I got this recently, um, and it's by Music Nomad. So there's a ton of different companies that are out there that are making cleaning products, right? They're, you know, everybody's trying to, uh, to trying to have a piece of that market, especially because more and more people are buying vinyl. And um, anyway, what I like about this is is really a couple of things. I think it kind of, in some ways, modernizes maybe some of the um, some of those solutions, and it combines some of them into almost like an all-in-one thing. All right, so let me kind of quickly walk you through it. So this is what the Music Nomad um, sort of box uh, looks like, and it comes with a variety of things. And so I thought I'd just kind of um, show it to you. Um, so firstly, on the back, it actually gives you a little bit of explanation of what each of these things are. So you can kind of see that there's like, a, there's a duster, there's like a pad for, um, for cleaning records. Um, there's actually a, a, a brush to clean that pad off, which I think is great. So you have the solution, there's a drying pad, there's the stylus uh, cleaner as well. Um, and so, yeah, it kind of um, tells you, I guess, what you get. Uh, and I think that's important because um, I think that they have a variety of products um, and not everything comes with everything. Um, so anyway, this is what the uh, the brush looks like. And sorry, mine is um, still a little bit dirty, I guess, from the last time I used it. But you can see the black is the, um, the sort of the side for that's meant to be wet. The gray is, is meant to be clean. You have this brush that is just for like equipment and like other just general dust that you might have, I guess, around your setup. Um, so this other little uh, sort of brush here, that is for cleaning the black sort of, um, you know, brush that, that makes contact with records. And then you have this little um, stylus cleaner and you can see the one way direction. So it actually tells you which way to drag the brush, which I think is in, important. Um, and then it comes with this little spray bottle of uh, solution. And it's uh, quite a bit bigger, I think, than than the one that comes with like the, uh, the wood block. Um, so yeah, so, so that's essentially what this comes with. All right, I know this isn't technically a record cleaning tool, but because this thing came with a brush, I wanted to show it to you. It works. It takes dust that's around your tur turntable and, and elsewhere, and it gets rid of it, um, which is great because especially if you're using canned air, like I said, it kind of blows dust everywhere. So I actually find um, this little brush to be um, surprisingly handy. All right, so you can probably figure out how this works. Again, you got the drying side and you have the um, the side that's supposed to be wet. So you spray the solution on, on it. I suppose you could on the record, but I like to do it on the brush. And I personally use my fingers to manually rotate the turntable. I've seen some people actually just like leverage the motor. I wouldn't recommend that. All right, I'm gonna kind of mime this one because um, it's kind of difficult to do this at the right angle with the camera setup and everything. But basically, you you uh, you stick this thing underneath your uh, stylus and you pull it in one direction only in order to uh, to clean it off. All right, so the next category of record cleaning equipment um, comes in a couple of flavors. So you have some that are mechanical and some that are manual and some that are actually a hybrid. So the um, manual option is a spin clean. You've probably seen this before. It's upright where you have the disc um, and it kind of, it, it rotates through this little like basin of water and solution. It's very manual in that you're actually physically uh, spinning the record with your hands, I suppose. I don't, I don't think there's anything else you're supposed to spin it with. And then and then you have to manually clean it as well. And it's funny because they, I think the how-to video shows somebody like using like a cloth or something. And I don't know. I don't like the idea of cleaning a, um, I, I don't think I like the idea of, of uh, drying a record with a cloth, uh, especially like multiple records. And then what do you do with them? Because they're probably still going to be a little wet. So then what? You have like records that are like sitting on, you know, on like plates or something around your house. I, I don't even know like what you're supposed to do with them if you're if you're going to be cleaning a lot of records at one time. So me personally, um, you know, spin clean, I suppose, is good for what it is. It's 80 bucks. But at the same time, isn't it just like a plastic basin and like something to suspend the record over it? How is it $80? So I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that, but I know that there's a lot of fans of that one. So the hybrid solution is, um, one example is made by a company called Record Doctor. And what this is, is it's not the, re the record is not upright, instead it is down. And what you're doing is you're, um, you're, you're uh, cleaning this, the top surface of the record manually, okay? 
with you know with like a brush and like solution you're turning it upside down on the same um, sort of platter and there is a vacuum underneath it so it, it kind of like goes from underneath and so you manually turn the record like so there's this little um, this little like um, uh, clamp that goes on the record and then you're manually turning it while the vacuum is on in order for it to vacuum out uh, the uh, the solution and theoretically dirt so I've had one of those machines before as well I think today they're like a couple hundred bucks and so it gets it gets a little bit closer to that um, sort of fully mechanical option right you're still spinning it with your hand but at least and, and you're cleaning it um, manually but at least there's that vacuum power that um, that uh, reduces the the need to to actually get all the dirt out yourself and to um, and, and then to uh, to dry it as well so um, so I've had one of those before don't have it anymore what I do have right now is a VPI cleaner now I know that VPI cleaners uh, Let's see, they, they can retail for, I don't even know, it was like six or eight hundred dollars these days. I ended up buying a used one from a shop. Now you, you might say, why would you ever buy a used one from a shop given like how much uh, work it's, it's probably, um, you know, or how many records it's probably cleaned in its lifetime. I actually bought this one specifically from a hi-fi shop that doesn't sell vinyl. So they were only, <laughs> they were only using it to clean records uh, that they were demoing. Plus, um, as soon as I got it, I actually replaced the uh, turntable motor. I think it was the turntable motor. I don't think it was the vacuum. I think it was a turntable motor because I could tell that there were some issues with it um, not uh, spinning sort of consistently. And I was shocked at how easy it was to actually get that motor in and have the very same shop um, swap it out for me uh, very inexpensively. And so not only did I get a great deal on VPI, I also have like this new um, turntable motor. So. Anyway, um, I like the VPI because it is more automatic. There is um, the ability for you know the uh, the turntable spins automatically, and there's vacuum power that's automatic. There's still a little bit of manual nature to it in terms of like applying the solution and brushing it. Um, but VPI, so far at least in terms of this mid-grade thing, um, in terms of effectiveness, is uh, is is my best uh, is 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 my favorite solution out of the ones that I've tried. So here, take a look at um, at how this thing works. All right, so this is what the platter looks like, and uh, this is what a dirty record looks like. This one isn't too dusty, not too bad, but anyway, for demo purposes, you stick the thing on here. Um, you've got this like little screw clamp, and that is so that when you turn on the vacuum, it doesn't like freeze the progress of the record by like lifting it up off the platter. Um, I usually apply solution fairly. Um, uh, liberally on this thing I probably need to use a little bit more um, and then you and then what I do is I just kind of uh, spread it out first um, across the record before I end up getting a little bit um, a little bit more aggressive in terms of actually scrubbing it so I thought I'd turn the uh, the background sound on just to give you an idea of, um, of the noise that it makes but um, you know here I'm trying to get uh, obviously a little bit more and then I scrub and and I mean like I sometimes scrub like a little bit aggressively I do side to side not necessarily parallel with the grooves guess what I've been doing this for a while and I've never seen any damage I've not had like dust or, or dirt get stuck in the brush and then have it start scratching the disc none of that has ever happened so I don't have a problem getting somewhat aggressive um, turning on this uh, this vacuum, it is um, it's pretty loud, but um, you know just go through one resolution, uh, excuse me, revolution in order for it to uh, to pick up the liquid, and um, and then that's just kind of it. All right, so the most effective option that is out there is definitely. I'm going to say definitely in my opinion, <laughs> an ultrasonic cleaner. Now, I know that the um, spectrum of ult ultrasonic cleaners is quite wide. I, I'm sure that you could spend $10,000 on one of these things um, if, if you wanted to, right? There's, I think, I'm pretty sure there's like super high-end versions of, of this thing that you can get. But get this, I was able to DIY one at home with like basic tools and a trip to Home Depot and like ordering one or two things online for all in probably about $220, $240. And um, I did this a couple of years ago and more, more recently, I feel like I've seen other people DIY their own and then sell them like as a fully DIY thing for like the same price. The same price as what it would cost you to actually kit it together yourself and put it together. So um, anyway, um, I, I wanna show you what my DIY solution looks like and how it works, and then I'll um, and then I'll kind of uh, close, I guess, maybe with some uh, pros and cons of that one. 
All right, so what this is, is actually just a jewelry ultrasonic cleaner. Like that's what this thing is made for. It is a metal vessel. And what it does is it sends these little, uh, like sort of ultrasonic shock waves to uh, clean the surface of, well, you know, what it's supposed to be made for is, uh, is jewelry, but in this case, vinyl. So what I've done is I've essentially bolted on a apparatus that, that spins a record. So there's a motor and there's a spindle, and then there's like clamps on this thing. And it's not that pretty to be fair, um, but it works. And so you turn the thing on and you set the temperature and then it turns the, uh, the record and you can, you can set a, uh, a timer and everything. So here's the thing with it actually spinning and you can watch it spin. And when you want to um, to put a record on, so you've got this rod and you have these rubber stoppers that you have on either side and that's just to keep the record so that as the brass rod is spinning, it doesn't just, um, it like it only spin and then the record stays static, right? So you wanna have some pressure on both sides. And so you turn it on and then it um, slowly spins and, and you actually have the ability to control um, the speed as well. So here's the um, the back angle, and you can see kind of exactly how this thing attaches. Um, you set the uh, the speed, and then it um, you know, and then it goes. And here's the thing: is that you don't want to have sort of liquid on the record and have it drain back onto like the label. So it's really good to kind of slow it down and have it go. I don't know, relatively slow, I guess, as it revolves. So the temperature I set to 34. Now keep in mind this is Celsius. You want it a little bit warm because that helps, um, I think that helps clean it up, but you don't want it too warm to warp uh, or you know melt the record. And then I set uh, each record that I'm cleaning in this thing to, uh, to a 15 minute timer. All right, so the most controversial part of probably this entire video is what is the solution that goes in that ultrasonic cleaner? So the vast majority of it is um is is distilled water okay and so how you know how much to fill up is you you put a record on and you make sure that there's not so much that it covers the label because you don't want the label to get uh, to get wet um, so most of it is distilled water i also use about a cup of 70 percent isopropyl alcohol now the most controversial aspect of this uh of this entire thing is that what looks like cascade, that is actually a surfactant. So it's not dish soap. What it is is used in the dishwasher in order to make sure that you don't have like water spots on your dishes. Pretty sure that that's like the primary use. Um, so you've probably seen it. I think like jet dry is another example, right? Um, so the reason why I use it not only uh, in this case, but also in, um, in my VPI cleaning, well, is, is actually a little bit different. So in the VPI, it ensures that the solution adheres to the vinyl so that when you're using a brush to agitate the vinyl, you're doing it on a wet surface. So what you don't want is to put solution on a record and just have it bubble up, like lots of like little bubbles of water um, and, and it not actually spread evenly across the record because you don't wanna be agitating it in dry spots. Right, so you want you want the entire surface to be wet, so that's the purpose in the VPI. In the ultrasonic, um, the main reason I think to uh, to use it here is um, is is simply for ease of uh, ease of drying the record, and to make sure that the solution stays on the record for as long as it can. So if you think about as the record turns on the um, on that spindle that I showed you. You don't want the um, the solution to bubble up on the record as it ascends from the water surface and then roll down the record. And so when you have the surf this uh, surfactant, it stays, it adheres to the surface better and it's not gonna damage your label of, of the record by getting it wet. And um, and it just it, I just feel like it dries better. So that I think is the reason, and I understand why people don't like it because they don't really see the exact purpose. But I kind of I've never seen any damage because of it, and I kind of get the purpose of it. So I don't know. Maybe that's just me. All right. So an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, let's see. So some cons. How about some cons first? <laughs> So some cons are preparing the solution. So uh, I, I showed you I showed you the solution that I use in terms of um, you know the components, but 
you know, here's the thing, like how many records do you have to get ready that need ultrasonic cleaning in order to justify mixing up that solution and like getting it all ready in the unit? Now you can store your ultrasonic cleaner with some solution in it, but I wouldn't recommend doing it for that long just because, um, I don't know, like water can go bad. I mean, you know, even, even with alcohol, in it, um, it can go bad, and um, you'll you'll end up starting to get some like oxidation uh, from the uh, from the ultrasonic um, sort of machine as well, and uh, and that's not good. So you you kind of want to have like a backlog of records that you've been waiting to clean in order to prepare the solution in order to set this thing up. Another con is it is obscenely loud. You do not want to be running this thing inside your home. Now I'm sure that some of the more expensive options are not nearly as loud. This option is loud. Um, I, I, I seriously think you should probably wear earplugs if you're doing it inside. Much better to do it outside your house or your apartment. And that's not, um, and that's not always the easiest thing uh, to do. So those are some pretty big cons. What else? I mean, so as soon as the thing's off, it's going to be wet. Um, and so this kind of gets, uh, gets me back to some of my earlier complaints, right, about like, what do you do with a wet disc? So this is one reason why having an ultrasonic and a VPI is a little bit harmonious, because as soon as you take that disc out of the, uh, the ultrasonic, then you can dry it immediately if you have one of these uh, vacuum machines. So anyway, back to some cons. You have to keep an eye on it because you want to make sure that the temperature doesn't get too high for obvious reasons. You don't want to like melt your record. I don't know if anybody's ever done that with a, with a um, ultrasonic cleaner. Um, and then there's the time element. So I think that the recommendation is for something like between 10 and 15 minutes per record to, um, to, to clean. Now, at least it cleans both sides at one time. And the um, unit that I have uh, with those rubber stoppers that I showed has the ability to add up to three records um, running at once. But you do, you do have to, I don't know, you have to like kind of police it, I guess. Um, so at least it's like a set it and forget it kind of thing, I suppose. You want to have a timer, but, um, but still, you do have to uh, police it. So those, those are some of the cons. Now the pros. Um, this is, it's definitely the most effective uh, option for cleaning records. So I've put stuff on the uh, VPI, played it, and then decided to clean it again, but on the ultrasonic. And, and the impact can be uh, considerable depending on how dirty your record is and why it's dirty, like with what, right? So basic dust on the exterior surface of the record, you can, you can handle that with, with any of these options, probably. You don't need to go to a, uh, an ultrasonic for that. It really is for when there's grime that's stuck in the grooves of the record. Um, that, uh, that, that a VPI can't get out. And you know, here's the thing, like a brush that you're using on a VPI, does it really have the ability to sort of agitate inside the grooves, like deep into the grooves of the record? It doesn't. Um, you know, th those brushes are gonna be mostly surface. They might be able to get some things that are kind of stuck in there that, that, that the brush uh, bristles are able to kick out. But otherwise, your, your best bet for actually getting into the grooves is an ultrasonic. And there can be uh, things in there right, that, um, that, uh, that, that some of these other methods aren't gonna get. And so I've, I've definitely seen or heard measurable difference between a record pre-ultrasonic and post-ultrasonic. And so if you're like me and you're buying a lot of vintage stuff and you don't know, you know where some of the stuff has been, I think it's helpful to have an ultrasonic around just as a, I'll say as a last resort, because I, I don't I don't often use it unless I'm unless I have something that I really want to salvage. Maybe it's a lesser condition title, and I, I want to see if there's any um, you know sort of good Sonics left, or maybe it is a, a particularly valuable record that I got in that um, you know probably hadn't been cleaned before, or at least recently, and I wanted to make sure I did a good job before storing it. So I, I do see a lot of value for all of these options, but I will say that the one um, the one that I use the most, I would still say is VPI. So even though I have like, you know, these brushes that are like right next to the record player, that's that's really for like last or, you know, first line of defense kind of thing. But if I get records in, or if I pull something out after a while and, and find out that I hadn't cleaned it before, it's going on the VPI. Um, that, that really is probably the one I reach to, um, or I reach for most regularly to get a deep clean. But I do like having all of these options at my disposal because they all have use, they're all important, 
And, um, and you know, I'm not saying that everybody needs all of them. It kind of depends on what types of records that you're getting and how dirty they are. If you're only buying new stuff, you probably don't need an ultrasonic. You may not even need a VPI. Um, so it really, it really just depends on the person. But these are the, uh, the methods that I like to use. So um, I've put myself out there. You know that I use uh, surfactant. Um, let, me, let me know what you think about some of these methods, whether you agree or disagree, um, or if you think you have a better, uh, better solution than what I've uh, shared with you today. So thanks a lot. Please hit subscribe. I'll see you next time.